scientific discovery. We ask important questions with deep consequences for humanity as we explore the great unknowns of the Earth, our solar system, and the universe. Our students work with faculty in astronomy, cosmology, geosciences, planetary sciences, exploration systems engineering, and science education. We are breaking down the boundaries between these disciplines to answer the biggest questions that cannot be answered within a single discipline. Our degrees are designed to challenge students, to encourage critical thinking and scientific inquiry, and to inspire exploration. At the school, we're exploring all of Earth's continents and looking at the future in terms of climate and water supplies. We study astrobiology and seek to understand the relationship between life and a planet. We're at the very center of the community trying to understand whether Mars is habitable, maybe even in the present day. We have one of the largest collections of meteorites in the world, the largest at any university. And we have some of the best university facilities for building flight instruments and spacecraft for exploring our moon, planets, asteroids, and the unknowns of the universe. Here at the School of Earth and Space Exploration, we are combining the strengths of science, engineering, and education to set the stage for a new era of exploration of our Earth, our universe, and of the future. All right, well, um, I'd like to start us off with a very, very warm welcome to our incoming majors to the School of Earth and Space Exploration. My name is Minnie Wadwa and I am director of the school and uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome you. We're, we'd be pleased to have you under any circumstances, of course, but we are especially pleased that you're here with us despite these extremely challenging circumstances that we've been through in these last uh, few months. And I want you to know that we are here to support you and we're here to help you succeed. And you're, aware, you're joining a very, very special community. Uh, the School of Earth and Space Exploration is by design a, a really unique place that combines a variety of disciplines that you really generally don't find uh, put together in the way that we have here. Uh, we've got uh, a combination of astrophysics and uh, cosmology and uh, combined with planetary science as well as uh, geological sciences as well as science education and engineering for exploration. And we do that deliberately because we are seeking to explore our solar system, explore our Earth, explore the universe, and we're seeking to answer the biggest questions that humanity has that you really cannot answer just with a single discipline. And so this is a really unique place, and it's a great community that we welcome you to, this, uh, to be part of. Um, in the school, we care deeply about our research and education mission. You'll have the opportunity while you're here to be part of world-class research in different areas. You'll learn the skills to prepare you for a variety of careers beyond uh, uh, your, your school here. And you'll learn effective science communication uh, through a lot of our community engagement programs. And so you'll have lots of opportunities to do some really exciting things. And uh, Obviously, we, you know, we really, like I said, care deeply about our research and education mission, but that's not all that we care about. We really want um, us to be a community that supports each other and to help and, and helps each other succeed. And, and that's really uh, you know, what we are going to be doing for you, hopefully. And I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased that you're part of uh, uh, this, this particular community for us. And uh, I know that you'll have a, a fantastic um, and successful time here in our school. Um, and if you ever need anything, certainly feel free to reach out to our leadership. I'll, I'll be introducing you to them shortly, of course, but I wanna tell you a little bit first, first off about myself. Um, I actually am a, uh, an isotope cosmochemist, and that's just a fancy way of saying that I like to study the chemistry of space rocks. And um, I have a little uh, treat here for you. I'm gonna be showing you some of 
the amazing um, collection of space rocks that we have here at Arizona State. It's actually an incredibly unique resource that's unique to Arizona State, it's unique to our school. We have the world's largest collection of space rocks at any university in the world. And so I wanna show you a little bit, a separate camera here that uh, will show you here some part of our meteorite vault, as we call it. And you can see, I'm gonna pan around a little bit so you can see the custom uh, cabinets there that we store some of our samples in. We wanna keep them very well preserved, of course, because, you know, obviously in space, you don't have a lot of water, you don't have a lot of oxygen, and those types of materials actually can erode and, and weather these rocks very easily. And so um, I want to show you a close up of some of our amazing space rocks. Some of them are shown here. You can see this one's got a lot of metal. So there are iron meteorites that we think are the cores of small planets that we can actually study and we can understand what the core of our own planet really uh, is like by studying these types of rocks. And then we have over here, and these are really my favorite ones. These are stony iron meteorites. You see this beautiful slice here through one of these stony irons. And here's another one. And these we think come from the deep core mantle boundary of small planets that broke up. And then, of course, we've got the most common type of meteorite that are, these are called stony meteorites. You can see that black rind that's on the outside, and that's called a fusion crust. And that's what happens when they fall through the atmosphere and um, they get incredibly heated up on the surface. And so uh, it just melts the outer surface and creates that kind of black glassy rind. But this is our wonderful meteorite vault, which I hope you will at some point have the opportunity to visit in person. And uh, this is what we, these are the kinds of materials that we study in my laboratory to try to understand the origin of the solar system, the origin of the planets. And these rocks can also be um, used to try to understand, in fact, the origin of life potentially as well um, on, our, on our planet. So there's a lot to learn from these types of materials. And uh, and I hope that you'll, you'll have a chance to learn more about it during your time here in the School of Earth and Space Exploration. So um, I'm gonna now transition over. I'm gonna move a little bit quickly. I hope you're not getting dizzy. <laughs> I'm gonna put this down here and come back to my camera here. Um, I wanna introduce to you, you to some of our other uh, leadership team members here uh, in our School of Earth and Space Exploration. And, uh, uh, I want to introduce Chris Grappi first, uh, first, and he is our Associate Director for Undergraduate Education. And Chris is going to be joining us from the clean room here in, uh, I, in our ISTB4 building, which is our uh, main um, headquarters. So Chris, are you there? Yes, I'm here. So hi, uh, everybody. Yeah, I'm in the uh, 100K clean room here at ISTB4, where we uh, assemble and test uh, spacecraft instruments. But first I'll tell you about my job as AD. I'm the AD for the undergrad program, which means I'm your kind of one-stop shop for any problems or uh, issues you need solved where the professors in your class can't take care of it. Uh, I'm always around for you guys to talk to. You can send me an email, we can talk by Zoom. Hopefully when things get better, you can just come by my office. The door's always open and uh, I can help you out and uh, solve any problems you come up with. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I do for a living and uh, what we do here at ASU. I'm an instrument builder. So all my degrees are in astronomy, but what I actually do is I design and build receivers for radio telescopes. And one of the pro projects I'm working on now is a uh, mission called Gusto. It's a NASA funded mission to fly a kind of a one meter diameter telescope under a balloon the size of a football stadium. It's actually would be, the balloon is so big that if you put it in Sun Devil Stadium, only half the balloon would fit inside the stadium and the other half would stick out the top. And this payload flies underneath with a one meter telescope. It weighs about as much as an SUV. And uh, it's being built with all the same rules and requirements as a space mission we send uh, outside to, uh, to other planets. Let me flip the camera around here and I'll show you 
our 100K clean room, which is really kind of a cleanish room. It's not all that clean. And here's the bench where my engineers and, and students are building the stuff for Gusto. And another cool thing is the engineers who work with Phil Christensen have our big thermal vac chamber open and they actually have real space hardware that will eventually fly into space being tested on this bench. So what this chamber is, is a big huge vacuum chamber. You put whatever you want to test on this big flat plate here. You slide it into the machine and close the door. Then you can suck all the air out so you simulate the vacuum of space and then they can heat up and cool down this plate so you can simulate either being in the shade or the sun where your uh, space instrumentation will either get really hot or really cold. And so the reason we go through all this pain is because if you're really trying to do things that are new and answer questions that nobody's ever asked before, you pretty much always have to build a new experiment to do it. Because if somebody already built the experiment to do it, you'd already know the answer. So we end up having to design and engineer and build and come up with lots of new technology to be able to go out and do all the science that we love to do. So I think that's uh, all I had to show everybody. So we'll pass it on to whoever's next. I'm sorry, I'm on my phone, I can't tell. No problem. You. Hey, Chris, so I'll, I'll uh, introduce next our Associate Director for Graduate Initiatives, and that's uh, Professor Hillary Hartnett. So Hillary, did you wanna uh, tell us a little bit about what you do? Absolutely, thank you, Minnie. So welcome everybody. It's really nice to see you today. Um, as Minnie said, I'm the Associate Director for the Graduate Programs, which you might not be thinking about right this minute, but as you go through CC, I'm going to encourage you to do two things. One, try out research. Find a faculty member whose work you're excited about and see if you can work in their lab. That opportunity to try doing research as an undergrad is really fun and it will tell you whether you might want to stay as a scientist in graduate school. And if you think you might, you can come talk to me and I can tell you about our graduate program and I can give you ideas about how to research other graduate programs. In the near term, since you're a first year student and maybe you haven't started to think about graduate school, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about me and my research. Obviously, I'm not in my lab today because it turns out I'm running the new graduate student orientation and I didn't wanna run back and forth between my house and my, my lab. So I'm gonna do a little Zoom slide presentation, which you are gonna get super familiar with because all your classes are probably gonna have some aspect of this. So, who am I? What do I do? I'm hoping that you can now see my screen. Manny, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Perfect. So who am I? I'm an oceanographer. I am a seagoing research scientist who studies the oceans. And so in these pictures, you can see me on a cruise. This is only a year or so ago. This is several years ago. Obviously, we're in the desert, so I don't do a ton of oceanography every day. I also study aquatic systems in the desert. This one on the upper right is in northern Mexico, um, and these are really interesting, very isolated lake systems that have unique uh, organisms and chemistry because they don't get water from any place except in this one valley. And this picture down on the left is a hot spring flowing into a river in Indonesia. And I study hot springs in a wide variety of places, including Yellowstone National Park. And so when I'm not on the ocean, you could call me a biogeochemist. I'm interested in how biological systems and geological systems interact, and my tools are chemistry tools. And so I'm definitely on the Earth side of Earth and space exploration. But after many years, I've learned that understanding how biogeochemical systems work and interact with each other, that this is really useful for thinking about what life and habitable systems might be like outside the Earth. Remember, Minnie talked about space rocks and alluded to the idea that Mars is a really exciting place to study, and it turns out the kinds of science I do on Earth are completely applicable to thinking about other kinds of systems. I would be uh, 
lying if I said it did this all by myself, so I thought I'd throw in a picture of my lab group. We are the Carbon and Nitrogen Dynamics Lab, or Candy Lab, and my group is really kind of a fabulous bunch of graduate and undergraduate students, and I put this in here to remind you that undergrads are every bit a part of how we do science here in CC, and you should think about getting involved. The systems we work on really are all range of earth system science. And for me, it's the surface of the earth, right? So this little picture implies that there's a deep earth with the mantle and subduction zones. But really, I think about hot springs and the sediments at the seafloor, soils on land, and of course, my first love, the oceans. And the reason I tell you all of this, the earth and space exploration, is because these systems could exist on other planets. So this is an artist's rendition of the surface of one of the Trappist planets, and we think it's an ocean world. Well, if you're going to study ocean worlds around another star, you better talk to an oceanographer. And I will put it to you that you guys are the future scientists that are going to answer questions about these worlds. What I do now is going to set the stage, but it's going to be a fair number of years in the future before we start to have data from these places. And the newest Earth and Space Explorers here in CC are you guys. And I think it's you who are going to start to answer these questions. So if you think any of this is exciting, shoot me an email. And I look forward to meeting you guys in person or on Zoom sometime soon. Great, thank you, Hillary. And um, I just want to add, you know, to amplify the fact uh, that you do have incredible opportunities for research here in the school, and we have a lot of programs like our NASA Space Grant program, as well as other scholarships that we offer that can help you get engaged in uh, this type of work. So, um, and then let's uh, introduce our next associate director here, who, uh, Christy Till who is our Associate Director for an Inclusive Community. Um, welcome, Christy, and please tell us about uh, where you are and what kind of work you're doing. Uh, hello, everybody. So excited to be here to meet you virtually today. Um, my name is Christy Till. I'm a professor of geology here in the School of Earth and Space Exploration, and I also am the Associate Director for an Inclusive Community. So there's been a recent a uh, reawakening of how much um, systemic bias we have in the United States. Um, and it's part of my job to oversee the efforts here in CC to make sure that CC is a just and equitable place. And so we do many things and we're having a task force to work on these issues this year. And if you have any concerns or ideas about how we can do that, I always look forward to hearing from you. Um, and I also, as I said, am a geologist. And so the primary interest of my research is volcanoes. Um, I'm sitting here today in my lab, which is known as the Epic Lab, where we study volcanoes. We ask questions about what causes volcanoes to erupt, how magmas form below volcanoes, and what volcanoes are like on other planets, including exoplanets. And to do this, we go to volcanoes around the world. I'm fortunate enough when we're not in the midst of a pandemic to go study volcanoes in places like Japan and Colombia. In the United States, I've worked on volcanoes like Yellowstone. And here, even in Arizona, our volcanoes Sunset Crater and in San Carlos, Arizona, Prado Mesa. So I thought I'd show you around just a little bit. So here, um, if you can see, I have two rocks. Um, here. And these rocks are from our volcanoes here in Arizona. Specifically, this one here is from uh, Peridot Mesa, which is about two hours away on the San Carlos Indian Reservation. And here I have some rocks from Sunset Crater up near Flagstaff. So we like to go and to the volcanoes themselves to study these rocks. We actually look at the individual crystals in these rocks um, to understand what the time events were before an eruption. Um, so we can actually tell the life story of a magma prior to eruption. And another way that we study volcanoes is these instruments you can see behind me, the yellow one, the green one, and the blue one. They all have names. 
um, but they are basically giant pressure devices that allow us to go down to the conditions of inside of a planet to make very small amounts of magma to study how that process happens. Um, and so with Rosie, Hunter, and Taylor here, we can go to all of the conditions inside of planets and exoplanets who are studying recently how magmas form on exoplanets as well. And as everybody has mentioned, there's lots of opportunity to get involved in this kind of research. But I also teach classes on volcanoes. I teach a class in the geology major called petrology, which is how we learn to decode the information in these kinds of rocks. I also teach intro to geology and I teach classes like science communication. And this semester I'm teaching a class called equity in academic science. So there'll be lots of opportunities to engage if you're interested in any of those. Um, and I uh, just want to say that one of my, the greatest parts of my job is getting to meet all of the new undergraduates every year and see your spark and your excitement for the uh, work that we do. And it reminds me why I love my job so much. So I'm so excited to have you here. And I look forward to connecting with all you of you, whether it's virtually uh, or someday in the not too distant future in person. And uh, look forward to hearing from you. So with that, I'll turn it back over. Oh, great. Thank you, Christy. That was wonderful. Um, so uh, last but not least here, we have our Associate Director for Community Engagement, Patrick Young. Patrick, did you want to tell us a little bit about what you do? Yes. So welcome and good morning, everyone. My name is Patrick Young, and I'm a professor here in CC. I am the Associate Director for Community Engagement which means that I handle a lot of our public facing work where we communicate all the wonderful things that we're doing to the wider community. And uh, there are a lot of opportunities for undergrads to get involved in that. Uh, there are docent positions where you get to interact with visitors, uh, right now virtual, hopefully in person, to our gallery of scientific exploration in Marston Theater. And uh, Meg and Rick, who are on today, can tell you more about that. Or you can talk to me if you are interested. There are also other opportunities to engage with schools in the community, which I'm happy to talk with you about. As far as what I do for research, I am an astrophysicist and I can't give you a lab tour. I mostly do theory so my lab is inside my computer. Uh, I look at the evolution and deaths of stars, supernova explosions, how they synthesize the chemical elements, and also planetary habitability, in particular how you connect stars to their planets and how chemical composition can tell you about what a planet is going to be like. So I work with meteoriticists, mineral physicists, biogeochemists. In fact, um, Hilary Hartnett and I are working on a proposal for a CubeSat to observe the bioessential element phosphorus in nearby stars that we'll be submitting in December. Um, so I do a little bit of everything, which is what I love most about my job. And I never thought I would do anything like that until I came here. So lovely to meet you all and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Patrick. That was great. Um, so now actually we have a, a little segment um, that we wanted to share with you where you'll get to meet a few of our um, other undergraduate uh, majors. So uh, Kim, if you could share. Hey everyone, my name is Justin and I'm a third year student with the School of Earth and Space Exploration. I wanted to be one of the first people to introduce you to the really awesome CC community and be one of the first people to welcome you to the college experience. Through college, you're gonna encounter a lot of obstacles, the first being obviously this COVID situation, but I wanted to let you guys know that you're not in this alone. We're all in this together and it's up to you to really want to take those opportunities that come your way and to make something really amazing out of them. 
like there's a lot of cool things that come up that comes along with a college baggage one being that you're gonna meet a lot of good people um, become friends with them um, you're gonna get a lot of good ice cream <laughs> that's one of my favorite parts about college and you're going to learn a lot of good lessons, lessons that carry on within you throughout your college and life experience. So yeah, with that, I kind of wanted to welcome you, welcome you to, um, to college and uh, to ASU, and I hope you're going to have a really fulfilling experience. Hello, my name is Stone, and I'm currently a fourth year student here at the School of Earth and Space Exploration. One of my absolute favorite things about the School of Earth and Space Exploration is that just the accessibility that I have to people in our community. It's this community that ultimately has led to my passions and desires about space exploration be elevated to the next level. I've also had so many opportunities here at the School of Earth and Space Exploration. The most recent one being that I was selected as an ASU NASA Space Grant Scholar for the 2020-2021 school year, where I will spend this next school year researching different things under the Human Exploration and Operations Missions Directorate that NASA has set in place. If there was one thing I could give to you as an incoming student to ASU, is one to honestly just surround yourself with a community that one loves you and is willing to push you in every area of your life. It's been this thing that has ultimately led me to the places where I'm at today and has been the key foundation for my success over my past three years of my college career. So I'd like to welcome you to ASU this fall and I hope that you guys have a great year despite how different this year might be. Welcome CC freshmen and transfer students. My name is Will Hall and I'm a second year student here at the School of Earth and Space Exploration studying Exploration Systems Design. When I'm not studying, I work at the Marston Theater doing school shows and educational outreach. Through this job, I get to study, learn, and teach all about the amazing research and missions that are currently going on within CC. With an active list so long, I don't have enough time to give them all their due credit here. It's safe to say that there's plenty of opportunity for you to get involved. Congrats and welcome to the School of Earth and Space Exploration. In a few short weeks, you will see why everybody is so proud to be a part of this community and being a part of CC. Hi. My name is Megan and I also go by May. This is now my third year uh, studying astrobiology and biogeosciences. sciences. I just wanted to welcome you new incoming students to CC, the School of Earth and Space Exploration, and to wish you the best. So I just wanted to talk about why I love the CC community. There are amazing professors, workers, uh, students, researchers, whatever they may be, um, and they all come together to form this wonderful community that really is there to support and help each other succeed. For example, I can point to the COVID situation in last spring, um, how many people came together to support each other when we had to go virtual and had to make this drastic shift. And there were really those resources and stuff available from leadership just to help those students. The building ICB4, which houses the School of Earth and Space Exploration, is one of my favorite buildings on campus. And it is amazing because you also get to meet so many different people of different fields, um, whatever it may be in that building and get to make those connections. If I were to give you one piece of advice, it is just to become more involved. You can do this with clubs, research, work. I got involved my freshman year in research and it was amazing. I had the help of professors that I had uh, in class at that point and I just met them in office hours. Um, made those connections and it really helped me overall. And these connections and these involvements just really help you to grow and to succeed. And that's really what everyone wants you to do when you come here to ASU. So I wish you the best of luck this year. You're all going to do amazing. If you ever see me in the building I see before, please come up and say hi. If you just want to chat or ask a question, I am here for you. <laughs> but I wish you the best of this year. Thank you. Um, so we obviously are very excited to have you here and uh, you'll have a lot of great colleagues to interact with. Um, Chris Grappi, our AD for Undergraduate Initiatives, um, if you're still here with us, maybe you could uh, go ahead and introduce our academic advising staff at this point. Sure, I'm here. So as you might know already, during your first year at ASU, you're advised over in the college, what's called the hub which is actually right across the street from ISTB4. 
But after your first year, you start getting advised by our built-in advising team here at ASU, which consists of Kelly Wallace, who advises most of our undergrads, and Becca Dial, who uh, advises the, the Barrett Honors College uh, undergrads. And uh, they're overseen by Becky Polly, who runs our academic program office. And they're the people who really know deeply all the rules and issues that have to do with uh, what classes to take and in what order and how to make sure you graduate on time and fill all the fulfill all the rules and check boxes that ASU has. So you'll, we're going to hear a little bit from them right now. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Becky Polly. As Chris said, I'm the manager of our academic support team. I'd like to welcome all of you to Arizona State University and to the School of Earth and Space Exploration family. I realize this is a rocky start to your first year, but know that there's lots of support both here in the school and at the university. Um, congratulations, class of 2024. And I'll let the advisors themselves introduce themselves to you now. Have a great year. Hi everyone, I'm Becca Dial. I'm the Academic Success Advising Coordinator for CC. Welcome, we are so excited to have everybody here. Um, hopefully soon you can be um, in person and interacting with everybody otherwise for now, Zoom is gonna be just fine. Um, I will work with the CC majors who are Barrett Honors um, students and um, also with graduate students. So at some point, if you're thinking about graduate school, you can come to me and I can kind of help you get started on that process and just thinking about what you need to do. Um, otherwise, we are here for any questions that you have. And just remember as advisors, we're here really, if you have any questions, that's what we're here for. So I know a lot of people might, might not come to us, but that's what we're here for. And we can at least, if we can't answer your question, we can point you to the, the right person. So I'm going to turn you over next to Kelly Wallace, who advises the majority of our CC majors. Thanks and welcome. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Kelly. Um, again, I'm the primary undergraduate advisor for the School of Earth and Space Exploration. So for most of you, when you transfer over in your sophomore year, I will be your advisor. Um, you know, we are all certainly here for you um, as a team now, but for advising purposes, just for classes and stuff like that, you'll, you'll go to your hub advisors. But, um, you know, I'm just going to reiterate what Becca said. We are here for you guys, um, no matter what. And um, we may not always have the answers, but we will certainly work our best to find those answers for you or point you in the right direction. Um, so definitely don't hesitate to reach out with questions because, um, you know, we can't help you if we don't know what your questions are. So don't be shy. Um, you know, like I said, I think that students that reach out to us the most are the ones that um, are, are the ones that go the farthest. Um, you don't want to just sort of, you know, take your classes. You do want to push yourselves and challenge yourselves and we can help you do that too and help you make those connections that you're seeking in the school if you're not sure how to do them on your own. So welcome, and we hope you have a great year. All right, well, thank you so much to our fantastic academic advising team. And please, I encourage all of our um, incoming majors to really uh, try to take advantage of the resources that you have here in terms of the, the great advisors uh, that we do have for you to support you and what you, what you want, to, want to achieve. Um, next, I'm gonna ask actually our um, AD for uh, um, a community outreach to introduce our community outreach group members, uh, Meg Hufford and Rick Alling. So if you, uh, Patrick, did you want to go ahead and introduce them? Sure. So these are the two people who handle an amazing array of things in our efforts to reach K-12 students and the wider community. Meg Hufford is our coordinator senior. So she handles logistics, dealing with schools, supervising our docents and other duties as assigned. Rick Alling is our Marston Theater Manager. Uh, he has a background in museum studies, so he handles our theater and planetarium and our gallery of scientific exploration and all sorts of exhibit and development work. Um, Meg, would you like to take a second to introduce yourself? Sure, thank you so much, Patrick. And uh, welcome incoming students and transfer students. It is no mistake that community and communication, uh, you're hearing a lot about it um, as your journey continues, but your adventure begins here at Arizona State University. Um, we 
take great pride in allowing you to learn about science, but also to communicate within uh, this community. And so we hope that you will be uh, on the prowl and looking out for opportunities so that you can enhance your own experience and also to share in the many, many events, uh, which some will be virtual, but we look forward to actually um, being in your company very, very soon. And so I just wanna thank uh, Minnie and our associate directors for providing great leadership when things all changed in March. Uh, we finished out the spring semester where we have so much to look forward to in this fall semester. And uh, I certainly will look forward as support staff to uh, uh, continue to support the great research and work. And uh, we will communicate the great message and the science that we're doing here out to the community. So uh, we wish you incoming students uh, and transfer students the very best as we move into this fall semester and all that it holds, we're here for you. And so thank you, uh, Patrick, for the invitation, uh, for the in introduction. And now I'd like to introduce my colleague, Rick Elling, who is going to come to you from the Marston Theater. Take care, everyone. Have a great semester. So much to look forward to. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. I, I mean, how many times can you hear welcome? But uh, let me do the, um, uh, do the, the last one. Uh, uh, the, I'm the last talking head today. I am broadcasting from the back of the Marston Theater. It's a very, very unique facility where it's a point of pride for the entire campus and for the ASU community. Uh, what we do here is uh, virtual programming in 3D stereo. Well, in fact, uh, I forgot to put my glasses on. So, so you, you sort of get the idea. You can't be here now, uh, but that doesn't mean we're abandoning this. We're doing all kinds of system upgrades and, um, and uh, content upgrades, and so the that when we do go get back involved and when students do start coming back into the classroom and the community is allowed into our buildings, uh, we're gonna be ready and we're gonna be excited about doing new things. Let me just show you a little bit um, uh, about how this works. I've got a um, little control station right here. This is me again, so you can sort of see, see what that looks like. And uh, from this particular station, this is really where students work. We hire, uh, as you've heard about docents, we also have Marston workers. You met uh, a couple of those people in the videos you saw. And uh, what they do is they kind of, they, they help build the content, they help develop uh, the, uh, the, the functions and the macros and everything that's going to be programmed into this facility and then take it on a bit and take uh, audiences on a big journey. Let me just try to show you what, a little bit about what the theater looks like while I can here. So you see there's a big huge empty room. It holds a little over 200 people and unfortunately it's a little sad right now because it's been empty for way too long. Let me get a little focus here and now I'm going to just kind of put my hands on the controls. I'm going to change the lighting a little bit so you can kind of see it a little bit better. And um, I'll just show you a little bit about how this works. I can actually put that earth wherever I want to. We can go in, we can go out. You can imagine just uh, there are probably about five and a half million